Did comedian Bill Burr cross the line? Because there's been a lot of mixed reaction to Bill Burr's. And I knew the Grammys were happening is because they were trying to cancel Bill. This is what Bill does. He says, this is the line. How could I go a hundred times over that? But he's really allowed to even have an opinion anymore. Bill is a top-tier comedian loved by most, but hated by some. His career has been marked with many great achievements and accolades, and this success has attracted many cancellation attempts, including some from online mobs. But regardless of who criticizes Bill, he refuses to be silenced. So today, we will show you why Bill Burr is uncancelable, what people accuse him of, and at the end, we will show you what happened at the Grammys. Think the way we think, say what we say, or we will destroy you. Bill dislikes the feminist movement, and he's not afraid to show it. To overcorrect that fucking heart, what kind of a man who still has his balls is walking around saying that he's a male feminist? I'm a male feminist! I totally see the way you see the fucking world. It's impossible as a man who was raised right. He leans into jokes about traditional gender roles and relationships and deliberately pushes boundaries to break current societal norms. You can't have a day off when you have a girlfriend. They just like see that open day, they're like, oh my God, let's fucking fill it up with shit. <laughs> but with women, there's no line. They can just keep fucking, just keep coming at you. Dude, they can do stuff worthy of like a suplex and they'll just stand right next to it. They don't even have the decency to run away. To, like light your clothes on fire. They're like, ta-da, I did that shit. This has led to many accusations of misogyny and sexism being thrown at Bill, sparking heaps of controversy online and awakening mobs of critics from the depths of the internet. Bill's name often comes up in Reddit pages, such as 2X Chromosomes, where users take hits at him freely. The Reddit user GG said, Saw Bill Burr perform live and the show was just one long, drawn out, increasingly hateful, misogynistic rant. Another Reddit user said, I listened to his podcast and comedy specials for a long time until I figured out Bill believes his jokes. It's more than jokes, it's camouflage. Despite there being thousands of other pages filled with critics, Bill simply doesn't care. And this ensures none of their accusations get any traction. He disregards the feminist movement as a whole, since he believes they have a secret agenda. If you really look at their agenda, when they say the future is feminine, that's not inclusive. And, no. they're, and they're all about, oh, make this more inclusive. It's like, no, let us in so we can take it over and then we'll push you down. Therefore, if anyone pulls him up on some of the sexist jokes he makes, they will just encourage him to make more. There are no feminists in a house fire. You can take the most hardcore feminists, you know, some chick right in your face, you chauvinistic son of a bitch, you know, little short, little haircut, you know. Second those flames break out, she'll twist those little hairs into pigtails. Oh, I'm just a girl. I want to go play jump rope. However, when offstage, Bill speaks in a different tone that would shock his fans and please feminists. This was proven when he asked if women are funny. Well, when was the last time you went on stage and you killed so hard the person after you bombed? If you're fucking doing that on a regular basis, people are going to notice regardless of what you have between your legs. Yep. All right. Thank you and God bless the United States of Canada. <laughs> but on stage, Bill continues to mock modern day relationships and gender roles regardless of who complained. I'm kind of like jealous of the way my dad gets to talk to my mom sometimes. You know, where are all those old school women you can just take your day out on? You know, when did they stop making those angels who just knew it had nothing to do with them? They just sit there and let you blow out the lines, right? What a luxury. His father was a typical Bostonian man with traditional values, causing him to instill discipline in Bill from early on. There's certain things like that, the catchphrase, uh, I'll put you through that effing wall. Mm -hmm. That that was my dad. He definitely <laughs> said that. He would say, I'll put yeah. you through an effing wall. Right now, you don't knock that out, I'll put you through that effing wall. He, he said it one time when we were outside, which was hilarious. He like pointed at the woods. He was just so used to saying it. And we're sitting there like snickering, laughing, like there's no wall, dad. There's no wall. <laughs> with this childhood, Bill developed thick skin, which aided him throughout his comedy career. And when he finally began performing stand-up in the highly competitive New York environment, his thick skin developed another layer and introduced a new layer of savagery to his jokes. And my first thought is this is the best week to be here, the week before the Super Bowl. That is so true. Before all the whores fly in, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. But just want to get out. Wow. <laughs> just want to get out of here before that. What is true? This is like the Oscars uh, for oh. prostitutes. Okay. All right. This well, entire week. Let's remember we're G-rated here, folks. <laughs> all right. So we're going to go back to a safer subject. So he's like 100 pounds overweight. I'm like, why don't you show some respect and lose a little weight next time you have the middle seat on a flight? You won't be spilling over onto your fellow Americans. Oh, I know. I know. That's off limits.
time it's because now fat people are heroes everybody <laughs> is a hero now so with bill's background in mind his clash with the entire city of philadelphia makes perfect sense In 2006, during the Opie and Anthony's Traveling Virus Comedy Tour in Philadelphia, Bill faced a hostile, drunk audience that severely booed several comedians before him. The harsh crowd forced the legendary Tracy Morgan to give up, only seven minutes into his 20-minute set. They also triumphed over legends like Bob Saget and Patrice O'Neill, but Bill remained confident he would conquer the crowd and deliver a stellar performance. He unleashed a barrage of insults on the crowd, airing every negative thought he has ever had about Philadelphia. In the middle of the chaos, Bill's insults to the crowd in their home state actually ended up winning him their respect. The crowd booed, but Bill kept insulting them right until the end, leaving them with no other option but to cheer for him. One minute left in the period. I listen. This doesn't change anything in this set. I still fucking hate you people. Listen, I'm out of time. You guys, you guys were here, man. Thank you very much. Bill showed his relentless tenacity and ended up overcoming everyone in the crowd who initially tried to cancel him. His performance reminded Philadelphia that even if he's outnumbered 10,000 to 1, he will still fight and he refuses to be silenced. He did receive some criticism from the news networks and journalists for his wild Philly performance, but it was minor. Ultimately, Bill's upbringing in Boston during the 70s prepared him for this, as it has given him a rare fearlessness that he's been able to use in today's cautious comedy circuit. Bill is aware of the nature of his jokes and how they aren't politically correct, so he created a smart way to disguise it. He went like this and it blew up on his hand and he just pulled out. See, this is why I'm animating this, because my entire career, all of my jokes, you know, if I, I've always been like, oh, oh, what does that say? That's going to make kids do this, so we're going to animate it and then nobody can get offended except for parents of uh, animated kids. <laughs> Bill's comedy is characterized by rawness and a willingness to tackle taboo subjects. His style is often abrasive and too controversial to say directly. However, in his older podcasts, he spoke with much more freedom, especially when he would read ads. Hola, mamacita. Is offering my listeners 50% off your first order when you go to clubdebbie.com slash burn. So stop wasting time and money messing around at retail stores and start drinking wine you know you're going to love. Just go to clubdebbie.com slash burn to get 50% off your first order. That's clubdebbie.com slash burr. Um, Headspace, man! All right, let's be honest. Most of your problems start with your mind. Some of his ad reads caused upset amongst the viewers. In one ad read during a 2018 podcast, Bill made a joke about how Asian people tend to mispronounce Charlie's and Charis. And despite this joke being minor, Reddit user hemorrhoid underscore donut made a post in the Bill Burr subreddit accusing him of recurring racism in his podcast. He said, Clearly he's doing this because Charlie is a racial epithet for Asian people from the Vietnam War when US troops referred to the Viet Cong as Victor Charlie's or just Charlie's. Charlie's for short. I expected better from Bill. I know he comes from that Boston white working class background where casual racism is the norm. This was countered by Bill's fans who emerged to defend him. How many times do you have to delete and rewrite that entire monologue before you are happy enough to pat yourself on the back for doing such a great job pointing out some shit nobody cares about? Bill has fortunately never faced serious racist accusations because any critic that dared to complain about a racial joke he has made gets attacked by his fans. Many say Bill can't be racist because he has a black wife, but despite her being able to save Bill from some accusations, there was a time when she nearly got him cancelled. And in case you didn't catch that, 
Bill's wife, Nia Hill, was caught flipping the bird to Donald Trump at a UFC competition. While some Democrats praised her actions, many Republicans started to grill her and even went for Bill. I get oh. anybody who listens to his podcast at all, even one episode, would know that this is actually very in character for her. She always has been major, like, fuck Trump. And that's why people don't like her. It's because she has a very, like, pit bull attitude about everything. And it r rubs people the wrong way, especially when Bill Burr tries to be more, like, ambiguous with a lot of his jokes. The comments on Twitter were much worse, and one Twitter user, who I suspect is a Trump supporter, said, His wife cheated on him and got pregnant by another man. That's why we never see his daughter, LMAO. It quickly shifted from criticism of her action to full-on insults to Bill and his wife. There were comments like, Let's destroy Bill Burr's wife and Bill if he defends her. To which Bill's response was, It's like those, those Man, Trump guys. They're always going like, Ah, you snowflakes, F your feelings and all of that. And yeah. then you make fun of Trump. They're like, Oh my God, it's so disrespectful. I it's like you're saying F Joe Biden. It's like you can't have it both ways. So that's my thing as a Pats fan, okay? Yes. It's just like if you're doing it too, quit your crying. Fortunately for Bill and his wife, the Trump mob that was once brave enough to storm the U.S. Capitol left them alone as they returned to attacking Joe Biden ahead of the 2024 election. And once this settled down, Bill later reflected on the situation. I love my wife. You know where you stand with her. Okay? The guy walked in the arena. Everybody cheered. She gave him the finger. <laughs> Nobody got arrested. That's why this country's great. Everybody ex Bill stuck with his wife the whole time and showed that even when he's being called out by strong-willed people, he isn't phased. Like 20 people with a hashtag can get like a news story going now. And I just, I just don't think, there's no problem. Like the amount of times somebody tells a joke and they'll say that there's a controversy at a comedy club. That's funny is they'll show the clip on the news and like you hear the crowd laughing. So the comic is basically guilty of telling a joke that worked. Right. Interestingly enough, despite Bill's extroverted personality, he takes a different approach when it comes to parenting. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you. Like, I, since becoming a parent, I'm still a rookie, obviously only a year in. There's a lot of shit that other parents say to me or stuff that they're doing that I observe it and I just fucking, I just fade back. During Bill's appearance on Tom Segura's Your Mum's House podcast, he shared his honest opinion on transgender pronouns. Now, you have a child. Are you raising your child uh, not at with all. a gender pronoun? Not at all. Okay, so not at all. gender I, neutral. I don't even know. You're doing gender neutral? I just throw food into a room? In the, in the general direction. Are you raising your child uh, by the gender binary? Or are you it, calling are you her a, she? Or is it her? Zim, Ziz? As no, I, 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 I would never do that to my kid. This rejection of the LGBT movement has been maintained throughout Bill's career. He's got an umbrella! What a fag! Oh my god! What are you afraid of the water? Put your shoulders up, you fucking homo! Bill even wrote a film that was called Old Dads that was centered around the LGBT. Here, Bill played Jack Kelly, who was an older father with much more conservative views. Party, maybe we should try to keep it a little more, a little more mainstream. Mm. To find mainstream. I don't know, like, you know, like, I turn it into like a. Uh, oh my god. Crazy. You cannot say that word. This movie caused haters to arise, but they weren't actually from the LGBT community. Many negative comments, such as this, were made. This movie was terrible. It was nothing but a bunch of leftists berating anything even remotely conservative and then Burr just accepting it with no fight. He's an absolute loser in the movie and indicative of normie conservatives. Bill's views on LGBT, combined with his views on cancel culture, came into the spotlight in his performance on Saturday Night Live. How stupid is that cancel thing? They're literally running out of people to cancel. <laughs> They're going after dead people now. They're trying to cancel John Wayne. <laughs> it's like, yeah, dude, God did that 40 years ago. <laughs> this caused Bill some serious problems as he was publicly mocking movements on a show where millions were watching. The month of June is Gay Pride Month. That's a little long, don't you think? <laughs> For a group of people that were never enslaved. <laughs> this created a massive uproar on Twitter, and those who hated Bill found themselves arguing with many of his fans who agreed with his comments. Bill then added fuel to the fire when he tweeted, Night of my life, in response to the critics. Soon after, many of his fans surfaced on Reddit and YouTube to defend their favorite comedian. One user stated, This isn't even Bill Burr at full strength and people are getting offended, LMAO. NBC, who owns SNL, didn't publicly say anything to Bill because the show was so profitable and it paid more to just let the drama take its natural course. This was a perfect example of the saying, Listen, there is no such thing 
as bad publicity, sweetheart. However, when Bill presented the most prestigious arts awards, he reminded the world that he will speak freely no matter where he is and who's watching. Was I the only one who wanted to kill himself during that piano solo? Uh. <laughs> this was Bill's way of thanking the pianist who performed before him, and once he really got into his performance, he could not resist the temptation to mock feminists on the global stage. All right, hey, how many uh, feminists are like going nuts? So how, why is this cis white male doing all this Latino stuff? Uh, and the Grammy goes to Grupo Niche. Hey. Bill was right. Articles were soon published criticizing him for the very reasons he expected. Pink News wrote an article titled, The Grammys invited Bill Burr to present Mexican and Latin awards, and it went about as horribly as you'd expect. The articles went on to call Bill out for mispronouncing some names, and they also tried to bring up his SNL performance again. To which Benny Bear posted, The Recording Academy needs to own up to this failure of selecting Bill Burr as a presenter. What a terrible choice. He clearly does not recognize how important this is for artists. Considering Pink News is a pro-LGBT site, they were likely just waiting for a chance to cancel him due to his previous jokes on the topic. That's what killed me when Bruce became Caitlyn. That was like a national news story, like yeah. on a, at a ridiculous level. Right. There's like baby seals washing up on the beach because there's no fish left, and they're talking to this, this lady, you know? Like, so Bruce, are you gonna go, can your Olympic back handle a D, D cup, or are you gonna go with like <laughs> something a little more perky? The Grammy's performance also sparked another huge uproar on Twitter. Jin Jin described him as an ugly-ass white man, and another person said she was praying that Bill lost his entire career. That wasn't all. Those that really wanted to cancel him even started criticizing his wife. One person said that Bill was marrying a... And another person said, Racists marry outside of their race every day. Bill got the most criticism for this performance, as it was seen by the most people. However, fortunately for Bill, there were some people who enjoyed his performance and came to his defense. Everybody on Twitter that's just like this woke social justice warrior that doesn't even know who the fuck Bill Burr is, mm -hmm. is going, yeah, see, look what happens when comedians start tell jokes yeah. about you know, sensitive topics. You know, it doesn't work out, you're bombing. It's like, no, the guy was fucking murdering. <laughs> we're all dying laughing. Yeah. And Theo Vaughn followed this up by saying, you know, Bill Burr didn't really say anything. But suddenly there's an uproar and then it becomes a thing. But the uproar is just created because uh, that way people go see the clip, right? We know that kind of stuff. People go see the clip, whether it happened or not. Ultimately, Bill's resilience, loyal fan base, and comedian allies have made him un- cancelable. However, this comedian has also had to overcome similar challenges. Click here to watch.